guys, good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Copic demonstration for you today using, well, to begin with using some Copic wides and um, some various ink that I put in mini misters. So I'm using the Copic wides to lay down um, kind of a, a wash of color on my um, mixed media pad. And this has been inked ahead of time, a lot ahead of time, with um, Sailor Mitsuo Ida ink. So with this pin here. And um, you can find that pin on jet pins and you should definitely tell them in the comments or an email if you like the pin that I recommended it to you. So uh, I am doing this on uh, Strathmore mixed media paper. I like using a uh, thicker, more absorbent papers with my Copic markers. Uh, I think it gives a more painterly look. And one of the problems I'd had is I had done my sketch with a um, uh, a darker, uh, softer type of lead. I think a B or a B2. And so I have some trouble removing all of the graphite staining on the paper. So, um, I recommend in the future, because I sure will be doing it differently in the future, that you use a lighter lead, um, like an H. I used to prefer the softer leads because they were less prone to cut into the paper, but this kind of staining is a problem for me, especially on skin. And you can build up areas of tone um, the same way you would build up layers of color with normal Copic markers. And it can help push things into the background or help them come forward depending on what colors you use. And I'm even applying some on Kara's skin because uh, she's standing behind the hibiscus sort of in the, the shade. And I know it looks kind of roughly put together right now, but it'll come together. So now that I've applied the first layer, I'm going to smooth some of it out just using the Colorless Blender Copic Y. And if you don't remove all of the graphite from your paper, you'll get smearing like I'm getting on her arm there. And that's because I used too soft a lead and uh, it did not get removed when I was erasing. So the next thing I'm going to do is spray these mini misters here on this drawing. And this is a glass, uh, a glass top desk so I can easily remove it with just some Windex or a glass cleaner. I'm gonna try not to spray it on her face, but I'm not, otherwise I'm not too picky about where it goes say that and I hit her hand in the hibiscus like right off with this very intense yellow green and um, these misters are really easy to make I <laughs> I even have a tutorial for it on my YouTube channel the only problem is they have a tendency to leak these are actually um, Rangers misters and they're probably meant to be used with Rangers alcohol inks so you would think they would work okay with Copic alcohol inks, but maybe not so much. And um, for these kind of mysteries, you want to avoid putting any sort of a ink with a pigment in it or a particle because it's going to clog up your mister and it's going to ruin it, which has happened to me a couple of times. If you want your mist to blend out a little bit, then you should apply it while your paper is still wet. If you want your mist to be, um, to stand out more as an individual spray pattern, then you should do that after the paper is dried. All right, so that looks like a hot mess right now. I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll come back to you guys. Actually, I think I'm actually gonna do something else. So this has colorless blender in it, and I'm just gonna 
try to push the ink out of Kara. You can also use a, um, a colorless blender marker to kind of push the ink around. But um, for this, we're just trying to get a general wash. And you really want to be careful where the, the spray bottle's head is. It can get turned as you're using it, which is why I get some stray. And another thing is um, a lot of these colors will get blended out when I apply the Copic on top of it later on. So I'm mostly just trying to add quick color. Another problem with this method is uh, if you're spraying on the pad, and I should have removed it from the pad, um, it will stain the pages underneath. So I, I messed up there. Anyway, I'm gonna let that dry and then clean up the mess and get back to you guys. Another thing is if you have ink all over your hands or on your bottles, you can use 90, uh, 75 to 90% rubbing alcohol to, uh, ow. <laughs> Sorry, I have a cut on my hand. The rubbing alcohol will hurt, sting, but it won't uh, make your wounds worse. It will dry out your hands though, so um, if that is something that is a problem for you, you might want to um, put lotion on your skin again when you're all done. Uh, I don't recommend doing that while you're coloring because it's going to get on your paper and it's going to cause a resist. And I'm just cleaning off my mini misters. These things will leak if they're stored horizontally, so you need to store them vertically. Um, I actually keep mine in a cup to kind of keep them from getting all, leaning all over the place. So at least they're mostly upright. And um, you wanna be careful that where you're cleaning, you don't, if you've labeled them as I've done, the alcohol, just like the alcohol ink will cause your marker to run, the alcohol will wipe away your your, um, if you labeled them. So um, if you wanna reuse your, your spray bottles later on, you can fill them with uh, rubbing alcohol to rinse them out. And uh, I'm going to just push some of the color back out. Since this just needs to dry, I can go ahead and clean up my workspace. Now you can use your, as you can see, it left. Oh, and you can see me too, hi guys. You can see it left um, some spray on the table. You can use your rubbing alcohol, but I actually prefer to use just cheap store brand glass cleaner. And usually I would spray it right on the paper towel rather than spraying it on the table. It's one of the perks of using a glass table surface. You can't cut on it, but you can spray and paint on it and you'll have pretty good success at getting most of it up. <laughs> and it's important to keep your work area clean because um, alcohol inks will transfer. Some people use them when they're doing stamping. Actually, a lot of a lot of artists use them when stamping, and will even put them on their stamps. So that's why another reason why it's important, lest you get a mono print. You might want a mono print. It all depends. My hands are still dirty and sticky from the spray. I mean, I cleaned them, but cleaning the table ah, got my hands dirty again. And I would assume you can use um. I would assume you can use like um, those uh, hand sanitizer gels since they have an alcohol base if you would prefer something that isn't, or most of them have an alcohol base. So I would use one with an alcohol base. And see how much ink is coming off? And these were clean hands. I had just, I had just cleaned my hands. Sorry, I'm making a mess today on all sorts of things. So in addition to using Copics, I also would like to use my big mixed bucket of markers. I did a review on this um, 
Hope by Artbin not too long ago. And what I failed to mention, uh, I just hadn't noticed, is that there is a carrying handle on the side, so there is an orientation. And this is too big to currently fit on my desk, so I'm gonna put it on the floor. Unfortunately, you guys won't be able to see it. And I store it standing upright, but for my own ease today, I'm just gonna have it open on the floor beside me. Um, and what I like to do when I work on a marker illustration is I like to pick out my colors ahead of time. And I like to do that by swatching them on a piece of paper. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from the pad before I ruin any more of the pages. So you can see some of them got stained. That's my fault. What's interesting though is as much as I was spraying it, well, it soaked through pretty bad. But once I let that dry, it won't let it continue to soak. So if I apply the colors right now, they'll diffuse out into the rest of the image. If I wait and let everything dry, it, they'll stay where they are. And I'm gonna go ahead, I think, and pull out so you can see how I pick my colors. So I have so many skin tones and browns and hair tones that I have two drawers for the E. And I know I'm going to work, want to work, with R22, I think. Yeah, light like prawn. Um, at least at some point, because that's the spray I use for the hibiscus. But I'm doing red hibiscus, so I need to pick and swatch some good reds and good pinks. And not all of my markers are Copic. Um, I have some Blick markers mixed in because I really like Blick markers. So these are the markers I'm going to swatch to find, <laughs> I know it's a lot, to find the colors I think will work. And um, I already know I'm gonna be using a very light, almost white, won't show up. It's R with four zeros after it, pink barrel. I already know I'm going to be using that to blend. So I need to figure out the other colors I'm going to be using. So I think I mentioned to you guys that uh, I wanted another, an extension on my de of my desk because this is taking up, um, doing videos takes up all my space so that you guys can see what I'm using. Oh, I should be labeling them. Um, and it was ordered last weekend and it should be coming like tomorrow, maybe a little later in the week. I can't wait because this doesn't work. I don't have any, any room to work. And I can't wait because I'm going to get a bunch of stuff off my desk. Put all my markers over there so I don't have to take all my drawers out. So I'm going to take all the markers I've decided to use, and for the hibiscus it's actually a lot. We'll see if I actually need all of them or not. And move them in order as best as I can, because there are a lot. Oh, that's slightly out of order. Out of the way. And I'm going to take this down, because I'm not recording with two cameras. This is, this is too tight. Sorry, that thumping noise you hear is me reaching for and grabbing. That's very pink. It's a nice color though. That's magenta. That's not what I would think of as magenta. That's more salmon than magenta. Grabbing uh, Prismacolors. I 
like to do as much of my figuring out ahead of time as I possibly can. It makes it a lot easier when I'm going through and getting it, getting the piece rendered. I have a lot of good greens. Prisma color, so maybe I should do that. I also have some pretty good ones in here. When I'm not recording, I like to work on the floor with all of this stuff spread out around me, but that's not a surprise. To any of you guys, considering how much of this stuff I have spread in front of me. So my local plaza had this super good sale on um, everything. It was like a 30% off sale on things, even things that had already been marked down. So I, or things that just like never go on sale, things that are like always good sellers for them. So I picked up a bunch of Prismacolors because I'm pretty happy with my Copic collection. <laughs> I wanted to give my money to other businesses too. And I think, I think prisms are good markers and they offer colors that um, you can't necessarily get in Copic. So I have a lot of prismas. I now I have a, well, I have a pretty good amount of prismas now. I have a pretty good amount of Copics now, but I've been collecting for like over 10 years. And when I went to Japan um, as part of a school trip, I picked up a lot as well. And um, I am not a Prism Color or Copic or Shinhan or Blick Rep, so whatever opinions I may give during this demonstration are entirely my own opinions. Formed by using these products for several years. So if I tell you I think something is good, it's because I legitimately do think it's good. And if I tell you I use a product a certain way, that's because that's how I actually use it. So this G28 is almost, almost not quite the same color as PB31. Um, it's a little bit greener. So if you have trouble getting Copic markers in your area, but you can get a hold of um, open stock Prisma colors, PB31, <laughs> like you care about that one color. But there are analogs. Um, I haven't sat down, that would take a lot more money than I'm willing to spend to sit down and figure out all of the analogs. Money than I have in my budget at this point. But if that's something you're interested in seeing, you should comment first of all. Um, and you should also keep an eye out because I am starting a Patreon soon. And that is something I would love to do for you guys. And I already have a pretty extensive marker collection. So some of it would just be sitting down and testing everything. But when I buy markers, I buy them trying to avoid anal uh, copycats. Not, I don't mean copycats, like one company is copying the other. I really mean um, duplicates of the same color. So uh, there might, <laughs> it might entail some field research, but I would totally love to do it. I'd, love for that information to be available. If you know of a source that already has an extensive list of duplicate colors, you should, I would appreciate you letting me know and I can share that and give you credit for finding it, of course, and give them credit for doing it, of course, and then I don't have to reinvent the wheel. But if that doesn't exist, I would totally love to do that. Or um, maybe at some point, myself and some other artists can uh, 
sort of combine our collection, our collective collections, and uh, work on that together. That would be a really nice group project, I think. And as I'm finishing uh, pulling the markers I think I'm going to want to use, I am setting aside the containers. And I think I've talked to you guys in the past about how much I really like Flix new studio brush markers. You can see I have a pretty fair amount mixed in. markers is that they are not necessarily true to their caps so you really need to be careful about swatching them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the background flowers, I'm going to do Kara's skin, Kara's hair, and then I'm going to decide on what color I want to make her dress. I'm sort of thinking magenta but um, that could completely change once I see how everything else looks. Honestly, I would even like to do cross, um, cross media tests for color matching. So color pencils and uh, watercolors too. I guess I should pick like a base standard that most people can easily find uh, reference photos of. So I might make Copic marker is my base standard since people are familiar with them and there's a lot of information about them available online. And then uh, test around that. So if any other YouTubers here's, watches this video and is like, that's a really good idea, I'm gonna do it. Would you please like leave me a comment or send me an email? because um, I'd love to work with you on that. And I have a pretty large collection and I do, I've been doing art supply reviews for several years now. So, you know, I think that would be like a cool group thing. And also, I mean, it would, it would be nice if you did not come up with the idea independently of this video. It would be nice if I could make some money off of it too. Because uh, reviewing art supplies sure isn't paying my bills right now. Not even close. And it generates a lot of bills. But hopefully the Patreon will help offset some of that and it'll let me talk to you guys a little more easily because that's communication is something that's been a problem for years and um it will also allow me to open up input for you guys which is something I am really excited about maybe y'all won't be so shy about asking for things if you're putting money towards it I don't know I, I would be less shy about asking for things if I was paying for it is how I feel about that. Whereas if it's something someone is just doing um, with their time and I'm not compensating them, I might not feel comfortable asking. So maybe that will help. I mean, maybe not for all I know. That's too much. I want to do um, kind of a faint blue-green shadow underneath it all on Kara's face. That might work. It might look horrible. We'll find out, right? Find out together. That's how this works. So, this purple is going to be the real shadow, and this is going to be the cast shadow from the leaves and stuff. Now I have all these markers. It's time to start working my way through them. So I'm doing that cast shadow first because I want it to slightly affect but not entirely affect all of the skin tones I'm going to be putting on top of it. And the color I used for this cast shadow was um, 
VG11 Moon White. Next, I'm going to do a overall base coat on her skin of E00. And I, unless there's a really good reason, I am very consistent about the colors I pick for Kara's skin when it comes to Copic. I guess I should say general alcohol-based marker. And I'm hoping some of the pencil ghosting that I couldn't get rid of is a lot less noticeable when it's all said and done. If not, I have a couple of tricks for that too. And I mentioned earlier, I have problems where the Mitsuo Ida ink has smeared because the graphite didn't get fully erased. And that's because I used a very soft graphite. I guess it left some on the paper still. I've been using um, an H or a uh, HB a lot more lately. So it's weird that I picked something I suspected would give me trouble. And I can always go back and add that green again. And the nice thing about alcohol-based markers is um, with most brands you can layer and layer and layer and get darker colors. So it kind of extends your collection if you're just starting out because you don't really need all that many to get going. When I first started using alcohol-based mark mark markles, when I first started collecting Copics, because that's, I was using Prismacolors in high school back when they only had the bullet nib. Um, when I first started collecting Copic markers, I bought a set of warm grays because I figured at least I could tan. I mean, I could, sorry, at least I could tone the paper, like uh, detone sketches, and I slowly added, I think I bought like the basic 12, which I actually recommend against. And um, if you're interested in this topic in depth, I've written about it in um, a holiday gift guide for this year for the aspiring alcohol-based marker artist. And it includes my favorite brands and it talks about Copic Chow. I'm using Copic Sketch right here, but that's because I started my collection before Chow's came to the US. So um, I might do things, I might have done things a little bit differently. And I kind of want to add that green back. I'm not sure if I want to do it now while the ink is wet and it would blend out a lot, or if I want to do it after the ink is dried. If I wait till the ink is dry, then I'm not going to get as nice blends on the skin. And this is kind of a, an experiment based on um, the illustration I recorded for you guys of Kara jumping into a pool of water. It was a Copic illustration and I used blue in a spray bottle to do um, like a, an effect and to add the spray afterwards. And I wanted to take that a step further. So of course the most logical conclusion is to use con contrasting colors in a spray bottle you can't control and make a huge mess but I'm also working on trying to get a little bit looser with how I do things. So if that doesn't force me to get looser, I'm running out of ideas. Gosh, I was gonna talk about skin tones so though, I think. Maybe, I'm not super sure. Where did I put that green? Oh, way over here. So, so far I've applied uh, E00, which is skin white, which is um, kind of a misnomer because lots of people don't have white skin or pale skin, so. Mm. Uh, then I did E51 Milky White, which is much more accurate. And now I'm gonna do E21 uh, Baby Skin Pink, which is another misnomer because not every baby has pale skin. I might even end up doing a darker shadow of uh, blue-green because the 
think it's Moon White I'm using. Moon White is nice, but it is a little too... It gets lost. And as you can see, those pink splashes I was doing, other than in Kara's hand, and I promise by the time the the flowers are rendered, you're not even gonna, you're not even gonna notice. I hope that's the plan, right? So um, I'm going to use Shell, which is a Blick marker. It's a very pale pink. I like it a lot. Um, to start putting in blush and Kara's lips and certain types of shadows. So the shadow under the nose and the lips and like a little hint at the top of the ears and underneath her chin and her elbow. And then I'm going to use Copic's E93 T-Rose. I mean, I basically think that, uh, nobody asked, but I basically think that color names should be based on flowers and pigments rather than on uh, things that we can arbitrarily change the color of or um, people's skin tones. So you can see where um, that graphite is still ghosting. I can pull in even more so you can see my, my sad shame. But it looks okay. I mean, um, it's not super bad and the 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 peach the sorry the blush I've been putting down looks pretty good I might even hmm I'm trying to decide if I want to do the cast shadow now I guess I can do it now so this is a blue violet which is good where uh, skin has met skin or under the nose or under her lip or in her dimple or under the hair and it's kind of a warmer cast shadow it's a lot warmer than that blue green I'm using to kind of imply uh, to imply like a floral cast shadow it's also much less shy less fugitive I guess than the um, moon green. And I know there are some artists who can do just the most beautiful, almost iridescent shadows and they do these um, really brave color choices. I, I ought to link them. I don't remember to link them for you guys. Just kind of softening some of the blends probably go back in later and add even more. And I'm actually going to grab, um, actually I could use, I could do Moon White for the shading on Kara's eyes, cause that would make some sense now, wouldn't it? And I probably need to find a color a little bit darker than Moon White. I think I swatched this, this is Aqua. I'm gonna put aqua aside because I might want to use it and I might not really depends on how this goes and I'm using E34 Oriental see this is it's a skin tone this is what we were talking about where I don't care for when you name colors after skin tones uh, <laughs> I'm gonna continue to knock in shadows cast shadows with this and um, maybe even do some light freckles I like to do several layers of freckles. I have freckles, so, and that's how my freckles ha look. They've like built up. Some of them are faded. Some of them are more, um, more, they're darker than others. So I like to draw freckles like that. And I'm probably going to darken up the blush on her cheeks as well. Cause it's starting to get, oh yeah, freckles. No, blush first then freckles. And I also sometimes like to do a hint of like um, sun-kissed blush on the tops of the shoulders. Especially if I'm doing freckles because that's what tends to happen is you get a little bit of, of sunburn before you get freckles. So I do that on the tops of the arm, maybe along the collarbone. 
and I mostly just work back and forth with the colors. Okay, I wanna let that dry and then do the freckles. Uh, if you don't let it, if you don't let the ink, the alcohol ink dry, it will um, dissipate so you don't get as strong a, a color reaction. Strong up outline, better term. So for the first layer of Kara's hair and for her eyes, I did deep orange, which is E97. And for colors I know I'm not gonna go back to, I go ahead and put them away uh, since I am limited on space right now. So when you're doing freckles, especially little freckles, like, like at this size, um, try to vary, well, you should always try to vary the size of your dots with freckles. At smaller sizes, it can be a little more difficult. And I think I'm going to blend out some of the harsher shadows over here. So with most um, most mediums, I've found that being patient, which is hard for me, I'm not a patient person, being patient helps you get the best resort, resort results. Going back and forth on something, tweaking it and, and fixing it. Oh, sorry, that was my phone. Okay, so for the next layer of hair and eyes, I'm doing E08, which is just a normal brown. Sorry, uh, I'll get back to you guys. Sorry about that. Um, I'm running a Cyber Monday sale and I had a couple of questions on my Twitter about products and I wanted to get the two, uh, I wanted to respond as soon as possible because I mean, if somebody has to wait three hours for you to respond, they're probably gonna decide to take their business elsewhere. So I'm doing another layer of freckles in, I wanna say, yeah. Light suntan, E13, another misnomer. <laughs> and I think I was interrupted while I was doing her hair with E08. And I'm gonna do my last darkest, or probably my last darkest layer with E23, hazelnut. And my camera is making this look very yellow, much more yellow than it actually is. Maybe I'll do a few in Blix Walnut. It's a very dark, well, it's like the darkest I would want to go with someone who's fair, uh, pale skinned. For freckles, but um, might as well show you guys. See, I have freckles and um, some are darker than others. And like we said, I'm gonna go ahead and clear up what's out. So I have room for other things. And it sure sounds like my phone is blowing up today. Did I pick up that? No, I didn't. Good. Knock the green back a little bit. Then do E59 Walnut. And even if you're not going to see a lot of color, let's see if I can zoom in. Even if you're not gonna see a large area of the color, I still like to put um, the color underneath it because I it influences the colors you put on top. And I like having a consistent, well, when doing skin or hair or something that uh, might have an overall color, I like to do base colors like that since it does influence the colors you put on top of it. I might reach back and grab that E08. I think I will. Dry and 
another layer, I think. So while I'm waiting on that, I might as well, maybe not, maybe I should do those at the end. Um, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is probably do the leaves and then fill in the background. So I'm going back over um, with E59, just kind of darkening my first application. And I'm going to use the darkest violet I own to add shadows to um, her hair. I say this as I'm looking down at my other marker color box, think, wondering if there's any of those that I would like better or would make a better choice. All right, so those basics are pretty much finished. I could, I could like nitpick about this stuff forever. Sorry about the camera noodling. This ends up being so relaxing for me, it makes me super sleepy. Now, for leaves that are more, leaves and uh, objects that are more in the foreground, I'm going to use a yellow green as their base color. And that'll help push things forward. And I find that um, Prismacolor markers are a little bit gummier than uh, Copic markers. They just tend to stick and squeak a little more, which doesn't make them bad. It just, well, it makes them not the markers I usually reach for. I've been trying to make an effort to use all of my marker collection more. However, the nibs are nice and soft. And um, if you want to prevent streaking, like you can see here, all you really need to do is go over the layer again with the same color. It'll make the color a little bit darker. Um, so what I actually like to do is I like to sometimes pre-saturate the, the area with a, um, a very light version of that color or a color in that color family. That's why you've seen me pick some of the colors I did. It just fully set helps to fully saturate the paper and allows the the dye to better disperse. Sorry about that squeaking singing noise. So this is gonna be exciting, right? I really need to revisit that Prismacolor review I wrote a few years ago since I'm trying to make more of an effort to use them now in my everyday setup. Oh, wrong end. I'm not a fan of bullet nib. If you're interested in seeing what I said probably five, maybe even six years ago, you can search uh, natosoup at, oh, sorry, natosoup.blogspot.com for Prismacolor markers. And I do plan on revisiting that review soon. This piece might even be one of the ones I use as an example. And I find it's very much easier to blend with your lighter color on top of your darker color. Although I think you could probably see the ink was already um, moving to fill the area and that was because it was still damp. See this is a little more dry, I didn't saturate it as much and it's not moving in to fill in the area nearly as much so I'm going to have to do more blending there. Which is fine. See that where I went over it again, it's actually much. Much darker. And you can see the pink 
is already getting kind of pushed out. I just wanted it to, to kind of influence the colors that went on top of it to desaturate them a little um, and to help tie the whole thing together since some of the color choices are going to be very different from each other. And you guys can't see this, but I actually have uh, Google um, images up with hibiscus flowers for reference. Just to sort of help me pick my colors and apply shadows and lines. And I do actually have um, a cutting mat. I, because uh, I know a lot of other YouTubers, you can see the cutting mat on their desk. I just don't use it for Copic stuff because I think it's so much easier for me to just clean off the tabletop with uh, Windex than it is to fuss about with a mat. I might also, if I'm doing this and you guys aren't watching, if I'm doing watercolor, I work on gator board. I only work on the glass top when I'm recording because the gator board uh, throws off the recorded light balance. But you should not ever use an X-Acto knife straight on glass. You should be using a cutting board for that, for sure. All right, so that's the first layer. <laughs> I do too many layers. That's the first <laughs> two layers. Now that I switched over to, oh, and I can tell you what colors those were. They were Prismacolor um, PB25 and PB167, which are both very light greens. And now I'm using G05 in Copic. And this is a Copic Chow, in case you haven't seen one before. And the nice thing about alcohol markers is that I can do all of this layering and I don't have to wait until anything is dry um, because it doesn't scrub the paper the way water-based markers tend to scrub and pill the paper. Which is why so many artists, when they're doing the cheap art supply challenge, if they're using um, water-based markers, they will get like the wrecked paper. It's because um, you can get rec uh, you can get water-based markers to work in your favor. It really depends on what brand you buy. It makes a big difference. Up and Up's markers, their um, super tip markers are actually phenomenal if you want to work treat them like they're an alcohol-based marker because they have a lot of glycerin in them and they don't abrade the paper surface and they can be layered almost immediately after application, which are all qualities people are used to in alcohol-based markers. So when they try to use water-based markers after years of being comfortable with alcohol markers, they are sometimes in for an unpleasant surprise. And also the type of paper you use makes a big difference. I've found that I can use water-based markers um, a little with less paper getting ruined, less paper filling. If I use like um, a cold press watercolor paper that has a wood pulp uh, base, so fluids, not fluid 100, but just your basic fluid pads are actually pretty good. You can also, uh, I haven't tested it yet, but given I'm working on mixed media board right now, um, you can probably get them to perform all right on this kind of board. But you should still try and give your, your water-based markers time to dry before you apply additional layers. And even, even so, you may not be able to apply as many layers as you would with alcohol-based markers. And I've also found that cheap water-based markers like Crayolas, you can blend them with a Tombow ABT with pretty decent results. But you can, if you're interested in that topic, you can really read all about it on my blog because I have written and I'm still writing a lot about it because I think it's really interesting. Especially since so many people are like really into the Tombow ABT right now or they're into the Zig, Zig Clean Color, which uh, layer a little bit better because that their real brush tip doesn't tear the paper up as much. So I've been kind of obsessed with water-based markers recently. 
especially as a supply blogger, to the point where I think my regular readers might prefer I focus more on alcohol-based markers again, because that's what everybody, that's the search term, those are the search terms that lead people to the, my blog the most, is uh, any any kind of alcohol marker from uh, fine color markers to Copic to Prismacolor, because I've re reviewed like over 20 brands. That was why uh, all those reviews, all those brands, I still have a lot of examples of those markers. That's why I mentioned uh, wanting to do uh, like an overlap chart, brands that have the same color. So you, if you already have that color, you can just avoid it and buy something else and make your collection stretch a little further. Since I have so many water-based markers now, because I've been writing about those a lot, especially with my affordable art supply series, um, that's another reason why I'd suggested wanting to do a more broad-reaching list. It's just, it's time and knowing people care and being able to financially justify it. And right now, none of those are really in its favor. Oh, and I'm using um, G07. So I'm progressively working darker and a little bit bluer. And see, the pink isn't even noticeable anymore. I mean, yes, you can see it. But it does. it's not like horrible, distracting pink now. It's just like, oh, huh. So what are your favorite brands to work with? Especially if you like something other than Copic. Because not that there's anything at all wrong with Copic, but there are so many. There's already enough people who sing that brand's praises. I, and they're a great brand. They do deserve most of the praise they get. I'm just curious what other people like to use. People who aren't me. I work alone all day and I don't get to talk about art supplies with people in person. And when I do, I tend to get like really excited about it. This is what I like. I mean, I love, I love drawing. I love comics, but I mean, you know, you don't run, you don't do reviews for like more than half a decade with no compensation if you don't love it. There's something so, so soothing about doing this that it's putting me to sleep. What have I got right here? PB, PB32. Well, that's a very blue. I should do that mostly up here then. I tried watching ASMR videos, ASMR videos, and uh, I enjoy them, especially, wow. I enjoy like the makeup ones the most um and they make me a little bit sleepy but this is making me super sleepy although I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit see how scrubby that one looks it's because one of my markers was running dry and it's not even though I've done like layers under it and layers above it it's still kind of scratchy looking Another weird thing is that I really like doing, <laughs> I really like doing summer scenes when if the weather's starting to get cold, and I really like doing winter scenes in the middle of summer. I guess it's because it reminds me of other weather, maybe better weather. All right, I'm gonna put my greens away now. I think. Although I can even lighten this up a bit with a very yellow green. Ah, you know what I ought to do? I ought to do, um, I ought to do the shadow of her legs. Oh man. 
Um, I'm going to regret this because I'm like getting tricky. Right? Do you guys ever do that? Do you ever get tricky and then you regret it? You're like, I'm going to be so smart. I'm going to do this thing. It's going to look really good. And then it doesn't. What? Just me? Can't just be me. Has to be lots of other people too. So far, not horrible. Not as bad as I perhaps feared. And you know what? It's when you do the tricky things. It's when you do the things that you might totally flub. That's when you grow the most as an artist. So, cause you, if it works, you learn a new trick. Got something, something good to do now. And if it doesn't work, well, that's okay. I kind of like it. So don't be afraid of not getting it right the first time or not getting it right because you learned something. And if you're still in school and you're like, well, you know, that's all well and good, but my teacher is not gonna let that fly. What you really ought to do is look, bring the thing you tried and the thing that failed, bring it in, show them, explain what you did, explain what you were going for. There are a lot of teachers who are actually pretty cool. They just need to know that you did the work. Although I did have a teacher in undergrad who was not pretty cool at all. And uh, sometimes things would go hair shaped at the 11th hour and he was not appreciative of that and he would also be like well you need to try more things but then get upset about them failing so i say that with a caveat uh your mileage may vary you might have a teacher who's kind of a jerk if that's the case i apologize you can point them in my direction i guess you can you can feed me to them i'll be your sacrificial lamb ah, there goes the cap for all that that's worth. Really though, where did that cap go? Oh, there it is, okay. But most teachers, most teachers, if you try something new and it doesn't go the way it should, and you had done your research and it worked for other people, or you had done your research and no one else did it, especially in art, most of them are gonna be so excited that you tried. Most of them are not gonna really care that it failed unless there's like a gallery opening and they might help you salvage it into something you can actually put up, you know? They're just gonna be excited to see that you're pushing your boundaries. And I'll be proud of you. Like, uh, I, I know I kind of rail about, um, how do I, how do I say this without sounding like a jerk? I have a problem when artists, when, when people are so afraid, when creators are so afraid of making mistakes that, um, they can't, they are not going to allow themselves to fail ever. So they, they just always do the same things they've done before in that's okay. And um, it's not really artists who are guilty of it, it necessarily. I mean, I'm sure there are some. I, and I can be guilty of it too, because sometimes like with comic pages, I need something to look a certain way in a certain amount of time. I don't have a lot of time to mess around with it or for freelance, right? They are hiring me to do a very specific thing. So I need to do that specific thing because that's what they paid money for. Experimenting is something I do on my own time. It's one of the, the benefits of hiring me or any other artist is all of the experimentation they're not doing on your dime. The stuff they're doing on their own time. But I get, I get frustrated with, like, I, refu I refuse to do it on my own blog. I refuse to say, like, five easy tips that's gonna, that'll make your watercolor sing. Four easy steps to better Copics. Like, I refuse. I'm sorry. Uh, unless it's cleanly erase your pencil lines and store your markers in a different, in the correct orientation. There is no 
surefire go-to always works that doesn't look boring. Trying to decide. I think I want to do that for the background. So I get frustrated by people who promise you or try to get you to pay, even worse is when they're trying to get you to pay for guaranteed results. You know what their guaranteed results are gonna get you? That your thing looks exactly like theirs and that's it. And maybe you want that, but I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't. I mean, one, when you're learning a technique, of course you want, if you're trying something new, of course you want to be able to replicate the thing you're you're learning from. That's that's how you master it. But if every time you do it, it looks exactly the same, it seems like such a waste of effort on your part. And I mean, I probably just want very different things <laughs> from what I make than those people. And I am not a very adventurous or avant-garde artist. I just am always trying to add something new or to do something I think might fail in a small way might look ugly and unshareable. Not because I like making ugly things. I get really sad when I make ugly things uh, and I emotionally beat myself up, which please don't do. Don't copy me. Don't, don't do those things to yourself. Um, but it's what I do to myself. So I'm speaking from a pretty real place here. Um, but I want to learn things and I want to get better. When I was younger, I spent 10 years drawing in the same awful style with no improvement because I, I didn't have anybody. This was before the internet was what it is today. Now there isn't a very good excuse to be stagnant for 10 years the way I was, but, uh, my family didn't get internet until I was 14 and, um, for years we had like the AOL portal, which basically dictated how we viewed the internet because it was only AOL approved results. And you can pay, at the time you could pay to get on that. I don't know if you still can. Um, and like people were not nearly, especially artists were not nearly as digital or online as they are now. And they didn't necessarily share their process. And a lot of them were like, well, you should just figure it out for yourself. Things have changed so much. And I'm so excited for you guys who are learning because you guys are all already so much better than I was at your age. And you're going to be so much better than I am now. But that wasn't it, that wasn't a thing when I was younger. And so I stagnated really badly and I didn't have any teachers or mentors or friends who were willing to like take the time and point stuff out to me. They just gave me like meaningless head pets, like, oh, good job, you're doing so well. Except I wasn't, I promise the art was terrible. Um, and it was cause I found a co comfort zone and I stayed in it and it wasn't a good comfort zone. And I'm always trying, I really am always trying to improve. Uh, I'm always doing figure studies and gesture st studies. When I go on trips, I always draw architecture and people from the area. Even if I am like going back to Louisiana, right? A place that isn't even that different from where I'm currently living. So for the background, I used BG78, which is a dark blue. And I think I'm gonna give it another layer because it's very streaky. And then I'm gonna go over it with a dark green. But even when I go to Louisiana, where people dress pretty much the same way they dress in Tennessee, um, I still will draw people and I'll draw food, just like any, any sort of practice that is within the realm of things I enjoy. I like, I like, if I do fantasy, I like very light fantasy, only mild fantasy elements. So I need to practice drawing people and cars and clothing and buildings and animals. But I am certainly not at all where I want to be. Um, and I think the way I draw is cute, but it can always get better, right? Like I can always push myself. And I think, I think that's true of any artist or anybody who practices a craft. You know, you can always struggle to improve upon it. Like anything worth doing is worth doing well, in my opinion. Unless you're being forced to do it against your will, will. And then I guess it's up to you and your moral compass how good you want to do it. 
how well you want to do it, how much effort it's worth. You know, one of my big stupid regrets is in high school, I was a straight A student. I was on the honor roll. I was in honor, honor classes and it was the biggest waste of my time. It really was because in Louisiana, honors classes was you work twice as hard for half the grade. We didn't go on field trips. We didn't, there, were, there was no incentive for that. And then I go into fine arts when I'm in college. And it's not that I didn't take math classes, because I did, and it's not that I didn't take English classes. It's just that I could have been, my time could have been better utilized by the school um, in art classes that I wasn't allowed to take because they conflicted in time with the honors classes I wasn't allowed to not take. Um, so if I could go back, that's like the trade-off I would make is I would want to spend more time practicing, actually practicing art, not just drawing the same crummy, ugly art I was doing over and over again. I mean, I was making comics back then. I've been making comics consistently for like, what, almost 20 years now. What, what? They weren't good, but they were there. But I could have spent that time doing master studies or learning how to paint or something if I had someone to kind of guide me. Or if I had the internet the way we have the internet now. Anyway, where I'm going with that is you should always push yourself if you can and don't, don't just like fall into ruts where you're always drawing the same thing. I know it seems ironic because I draw Kara for like all of my field tests pretty much. And I've explained why I do that. And I actually feel weird and bad about doing it at this point. So once we get that Patreon up and going, you guys can do requests and I can send them to you. And that way I'll be drawing what you guys want to see. And I'll be drawing stuff other than the stuff I always want to draw. So I think that will be good for both of us. I'm going over this with BG39 to push it into the background and make it look cool and shady and inviting. Even though outside is cold and overcast and rainy. Maybe I'll take a nap when this is done. Also though, I want to do enough of these examples to um, be able to start listing, have better Copic examples in my online store. Which, I mean, you guys have missed the Cyber Monday sale, sadly. It was 30% off anything in my shop. So that includes commissions, that includes, I, I put in a bunch of original watercolors, like big ones too, 11 by 14 watercolors on Arches paper. Um, I have Lucky Dip bags, all of that, like anything, can, were on sale for 30% off. And now they're not. Now they're back to normal price. Normal, Becca gets to pay her bills price if you buy this. Okay, so we're like really almost done. Kind of. <laughs> kind of sort of getting there at least, right? I really feel like I want to hit a purple with back there. And let's see if I have a blue. This might be way too dark. We'll find out, right? Right, guys? I might cry. We'll see. We'll see. You've never seen me cry on camera, so that could be like an ex- Oh, good. It actually is not too dark. Whoop, whoop. Just some contrasting color. A little bit of warm to like neutralize it a little bit. Do that over here. Maybe not. So I kind of like how that looks. Maybe in the veins over there. Yeah. Yeah. You know when I'm when I'm coloring, when I'm markering, rendering in my room, not recording, I don't get nearly as hype as I get with you guys. I get way too excited when I'm coloring with y'all. So I'm gonna do a base coat on these hibiscus with ballet, ballet. I know how to say this. Ballet Pink PB208. And it's just to kind of like help even out the color. Get the paper primed and ready for me to start doing some serious coloring. 
Do you guys like it when I just chat at the camera? Or would you prefer it if I just talked about what I'm doing? Because right now, not just today, but like I'm trying to do a lot more alcohol marker stuff since that's something that my blog readers have requested a lot of or more of. Um, do you guys find it distracting when I do both when I chat and I color or do you like it? I try not to talk about things that are too controversial. So you'll probably never hear me talk about my political views on here. Not that they're all that controversial or my stance on gun control or anything like that. Um, but you will probably hear me talk about things that are like borderline controversial regarding um, art, art supplies, that kind of stuff. Because I think it's important, and I don't think my opinion is the end-all be-all. Um, I would love to hear people who dissent, not so I can argue, but just because I'm curious, because I know the way I think isn't the only way to think, and I don't think it's the best way to think, necessarily. I want to hear what you guys, how you feel, and what you believe, and what you're into, and I love, like, having passionate discussions with people about comic craft and art and markers and art supplies um i also like feel strongly about like art education both when people are kind of getting taken advantage of and they're overpaying for it which bothers me because that kind of happened to me um and when people are really excited and happy and they're they think their education is worth the money and they want to share they want other people to have access to that because art especially like commercial art non-fine art is a teachable skill i can teach any of anybody how to draw a figure you know it's not hard i mean it is it's hard when you've never done it before because you're teaching your brain how to think about it but it's not hard it's not like you'll it's not going to take you 10 years it might take you 10 years to be able to do it like a masterwork, but if you're just trying to like block in figures so you can draw comics or so you can convey an idea to somebody, I can teach you that in less than six months with daily practice on your part. I mean, it's just being able to draw, being able to do illustration, that's just like something that you probably, you, if you want it, you make it a priority and you go for it. Like learning how to play an instrument. I definitely do think there are people who are, their brains are just wired to be better at it, you know, but I definitely don't think talent is the only thing there is. I. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I am not a talented person. <laughs> I am a skilled person in regards to I know how to use materials and I've spent time learning how to draw certain things, but I am not a talented person. And uh, I don't think you have to be a talented person to learn how to draw. Like I said, you just have to want it. And if you're as untalented as I was, you just have to want it more than anything. You have to be willing to sacrifice almost everything and I'm really fortunate in that I have, um, my mom is supportive of this. I don't live at home anymore though. And uh, my significant other, my boyfriend is supportive of this. So um, I have two people in my life who are, who believe in me to an extent. Uh, one kind of more than the other, but it's cause one has kind of, has a better idea of what I do every day <clears throat> than the other. And I actually, I don't have a lot of art friends anymore. I used to, but um, leaving Savannah and then dealing with really bad depression over the past two years has pretty much killed most of my uh, art friendships. But if you have friends who are, who think about art, think about drawing differently than you do, and you guys can hang out and draw together and learn from each other. You really should. You should have art parties and you should share materials. And you should do what you can to make connections with other artists and with non-artists. Like if you have the opportunity, that's something that is a problem with comics, especially indie comics right now, is we are not bringing in enough new people who aren't artists. And a lot of the artists who are 
doing well who are prominent they don't realize that most of their fans are other artists too and they should probably consider uh returning some of the support they i guess they think they're just so good <laughs> they're just so good they deserve all of the support no need to think about the people who make up your audience you can ignore them that's okay not a fan of that kind of behavior either because the only reason any of us are where we are is because someone or many someones said kind word to us kind words to us or showed support uh, when we needed it or we were able to do that for ourselves I guess I guess there's some people who are just like <clears throat> so against all other odds I've had to be that person sometimes too so I believe it but most people do have the backing the support the emotional encouragement of other people in their lives who believe in their dream I'm sorry I'm trying you guys can't see it but I'm trying to find uh, a hibiscus bud because I have grown hibiscus and then I have a hibiscus bud having trouble finding it. Lots of fully grown open hibiscus though. Also, um, and I'm bad about this because I get really stupid shy, especially at shows. Um, if there's somebody who has been like instrumental in you becoming an artist or you becoming interested in drawing or you learning how to do something artsy or craftsy, please take a moment, please, please take a moment and tell them and if you can afford it if it's feasible for you please please support their work because these materials cost money and this costs time um not only the time spent editing this video which is going to be a long one uh, i'm sorry recording this video which is going to be a long one but editing this video um putting it online, promoting it, the time spent learning how to use these materials that you guys never had to see me struggle with. Like, not just me, but any any artist, any creator who has given you the gift of their time or given you the gift of entertaining you with their work, please let them know. Please support them. We can't... My landlady doesn't take art for I get I mean I could try I, I could see if she wants me to like draw her kid but like really how much of my rent is that gonna pay that doing that once a month one illustration for her a month how much would that pay I mean if you if you can when you're reading people's blogs please turn off your ad blocker a lot of us Part of our income comes from the ads, especially if we have readerships who don't necessarily think about supporting us or if we don't request that they support us. Please turn off your ad blocker because those ads help pay for that content you're consuming. Those ads are your payment for that content. Or if they have a Patreon, back their Patreon. If they, and if they don't have any of those things, the very least you can do is to share their content with your friends share it to your social networks it really helps it helps us build an audience if you can't afford to buy something maybe someone else can i know it probably seems like i'm nagging at this point but it is a really big deal it's a really big problem when you read scanlations when you read web comics and you don't buy any of the official merch yeah yeah you are consuming that comic for free you don't have to pay anything for it but you're hurting the artist um and scanlation sites i'm not talking about viz i'm not talking about to uh sorry crunchyroll those are streaming sites those pay their artists they pay for the rights i'm talking about sites that put ads up on their site that you guys are probably blocking and for once understandably so because those sites are ridden with gross viruses that'll wreck your computer um 
but they're basically somebody is scanning that comic in another country or here and they're uploading it online so they paid for it once the artist got paid for one copy it wrecks their numbers it might mean they won't get hired by um publishers again just like please please don't read scanlations and if you're and i'm not I know it kind of sounded like I was lumping web comics in there. If you're reading web comics that have been reposted to a non-official mirror, you're doing the same thing. You're still you're still hurting the artists. But um, with web comics, just turn off the ad your ad blocker while you're reading their comic because that ad revenue helps pay them for their time. And you might think, well, they can draw, so they can just whip this out. Like, that's nothing to them. That is not true. It takes so much time, so much that you guys don't necessarily see. We only, for the most part, we just show you guys the most polished, finished product. If you like to do conventions um, and you see an artist whose content you read online, please consider buying a copy of their comic or buying some of their merch from them. Please, please tell them how much you enjoy what they're doing. Because the thing is, you might think that popular artists get inundated with like praise, but uh, not necessarily. A lot of them get inundated with demands for free stuff. A lot of them get inundated with creepy people hitting on them. Um, or people who think they need an inbox critique completely unsolicited, you, you definitely get a lot more negative than you do positive. So please try to go out of your way and let people know when you like what they do because that's part, I mean, part of why they do it, especially if it doesn't pay, is because it makes them happy. But part of why they're doing it is also to reach out to somebody else and make a difference in someone else's life and help somebody to share their knowledge or to share their ability or to share their passion. And um, I mean, that isn't worth, that doesn't deserve to be sneezed at. That's, that's not, well, they chose this for themselves so they can suffer. Like you, if you're gonna consume their stuff, you should, oh, excuse me. Hey guys, sorry about that. My mom called, you know how that is. You gotta answer. So, uh, I guess about 30 to 40 minutes has passed. So the ink I had originally applied on these hibiscus has dried on, um, blah. So that's going to make blending a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. Cause I can always go back with the color I'd used prior to the current um, color I'm currently applying, which is R17 lipstick orange. Oh, dang it, hang on. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if it had paused. I uh, had to go investigate what my cat was doing. He's being very quiet, and uh, since he is a six-year-old six male Russian blue, those of you guys with male cats know he is probably getting into trouble. But as long as he's not peeing on the carpet, I will deal with that trouble later. Actually, I can hear him getting into his food downstairs, so that's what he's doing. He's just getting a bite to eat. I guess hearing me talk all day has made him hungry. He's kind of hanging out up here with me while I was recording, while I am recording. So I am being, uh, I am coloring loose and uh, gestural for the flowers, mostly just using kind of rough strokes, just putting color down. Because then I can kind of blend it out. And I have some real hibiscus pulled up on my monitor. I think I mentioned that earlier. And that's probably my best advice if you are interested in learning how to render flowers is to work from reference. It makes it a lot easier than trying to memorize or make up from your head especially while you're learning how to do it. It's easier if you just reference it. And there's nothing wrong with referencing. It's not cheating. Good artists do use ref uh, reference. I think I was talking earlier about uh, supporting artists you like, showing your support, being vocal about your support. Basically, if you are
are interested in becoming an artist yourself, if you want to be an illustrator, if you want to enter the arts as a profession and you're not ready to yet, or if you're working on it, you should be really invested in supporting and promoting other artists because hopefully by the time you're ready, there will be a new batch of people there to support you. And while I was on the phone with my mom, I went ahead and picked the colors I want for Kara's dress. And I'm thinking I might do a white, um, like an aqua blue with a white hibiscus print on it. And I'll apply the white hibiscus print after I've done all the markers, probably with uh, Copic Opaque White because my Signo pens, which seem to work for like everybody else, they have been giving me a lot of trouble here in Nashville lately. So yeah, please do let me know if you enjoy me talking through the whole videos or for portions of the, like this, if you'd rather I just um, work to music or work quietly. The talk the whole time videos are actually some of the easiest to edit because uh, it doesn't require finding music and it doesn't require um, speeding it up. But, oh, <laughs> I really just want to uh, compromise with you guys and work to make this channel something you find useful and something you enjoy. So please don't be shy. And if you would like to see something, if you'd like to see a technique, or um, you'd like to see me cover a material, my focus is markers, um, pretty much all kinds of markers. I've even started messing around with acrylic markers. And last night I recorded a Posca tutorial. Um, watercolors, so pretty much all kinds of watercolors. Um, uh, some digital, it's not my favorite, but I do use digital a lot, especially for my freelance work. Um, inks, pencils, that kind of stuff, uh, dry -er media, I guess. I don't, I don't really do acrylics. I don't do oils. Sorry, cat wants in the bathroom, but there's nothing in the bathroom for cat. Not food, not litter box, those are elsewhere. I'm not in the bathroom. No one is in the, no one else is in the bathroom, cat. Oh, wanders off. Okay. See you, Bo. If you'd like to see me do an art challenge, I'll probably be doing the cheap I feel like I've been doing the cheap art supplies for, since MechaCon in August because I review I'm in the middle of reviewing a bunch of different uh, store brand art supplies. But if you guys would like to see a video of me working with them, it might even be a little bit cheating because I have so much experience with them now. I can just be like, and do this and do this and do this. Ah, look, it looks fine. And that's not fair. So that, yeah, that's not fair. But if you'd like to see that, I can do that. Or if you'd like video tutorials on how to use cheap art supplies and get decent results, please let me know. Please comment. Um, if you have a friend who you think would enjoy my videos, please send my channel to them. Encourage them to chat with me. Um, if you're not comfortable leaving a comment, I am super active on Twitter. Uh, not so much since I cut my finger, but super active in general. And my handle is natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P. Uh, I also have an Instagram. It is also natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P. I have a Facebook fan page, uh, natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P. And you can find years worth of art tutorials, art process, art progress, and art supply reviews on my blog, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P at blogspot.blogspot.com. Um, I also have a Tumblr, although I use it a lot less frequency than, frequently than Instagram. Um, and I have a backlog of messages right now. Hi guys, I'm not ignoring you. I can't type to respond. Or rather I can, but it would take me two weeks to type something. Um, if you're more comfortable talking to me on Tumblr, that is fine. And you can always send me 
an email and you can find my email address on my blog. So there are lots of ways to get a hold of me. Uh, I do uh, polls on my blog every two weeks to find out things about my audience, what they'd like to see, what kind of art they make. Um, Cause I do care about you guys. And I know um, some of you guys are very shy like myself. And I want to make this easier for both of us. Okay, so now I'm starting to color the yellow stamens. And um, I'd already put down some light green in the stamens. And part of it was because with flowers, uh, yellows, as long as they're not yellow oranges, often have a lot of green in them. Um, and also to just kind of unify things to bring some green up in here. And I'm coloring this with Blick 096, which is called buttercream. told y'all when I like using, I, when I said I like using Blick markers, I wasn't just giving lip service. I really do. And I'm not paid to say that. I think they are a great start to alcohol based coloring. And um, I mean, they're not refillable and you can't replace the nibs. So really, if you really get into this and you want to do it for a while, I think you should start investing in Copics where you can where you can afford it. If you ever see them on sale, take advantage of it. Um, okay, so the color I had just used was 014 Canary Yellow, also by Blick. And now I'm using Y13 Lemon Yellow, which is a Copic. And my next color is Y19 Napoli Yellow. And Blick markers handle almost as the same as Copic markers do. All right, so um, I might go in there and add, I think I'm going to add some purple just to Yeah. Especially with that background. Um, by adding BV00, which is mauve shadow, I knock the yellow back in intensity so it doesn't, so it recedes into the background more. Which is what you want it to do because it is more in the background than the stamen that crosses over it. And if you get some of the red, Okay, with Copics or pretty much any alcohol marker, red is your most staining color. It's going to, um, once you put red down, especially darker reds like this, it's hard to get it pushed back. Um, you, can, you can cover it up with a darker color. You can try to bleach it out with the colorless blender, but it's a very permanent color. So you want to be really careful with your darker colors that they don't get on the skin without you planning it. Unintentionally, that's the word I was looking for. You don't want them on your skin unintentionally. And I'm applying further shadow on these red hibiscus with Blick 033 uh, Brick Red. And this is where I'm not just kind of filling things in. I'm adding specific areas of shadow. And I may end up going over a lot of this with lipstick red and um, just darkening it up, making it a punchier red than it currently is right now. It's like pink with dark shadows. Which is fine. Hibiscus do come in pink and even a blue. Lots of colors. And I had thought about doing like magenta hibiscus. And do you remember all of those sprays? Yeah, you can kind of see it. They're like pretty much gone now, aren't they? Oh yeah, lipstick red. I told you they weren't going to be a big deal. In fact, I may end up reapplying them because I kind of liked it. 
in certain areas with discretion. I mean, when you have a random element, like a spray or um, flicked pigment onto the page, or just anything that's kind of out of your control, I think it adds a bit of a bit more dynamism, makes your, your piece look a little more dynamic than it did before. Probably because the random application of pigments introduces um, a little bit of chaos. And chaos is all about movement. Sort of punch that back a little bit. Maybe even go in with lip lipstick orange. Another thing, if you want to punch up, um, make your thing look more dynamic, is high contrast areas. I'm trying to see if I have. I think I picked it up. I'm gonna have to get it. I'm gonna darken this background, I think. Used a blue. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just in the wrong. I'm gonna darken the background up too because it's going to make everything else pop a little bit more and it's gonna look a lot better, I think. Higher areas of contrast. Do you guys have any tips for um, rendering or coloring dynamically that I've missed out on that you'd like to share? If so, you should let me know in the comments and I will totally give you credit. I'll give you a signal boost for your, your insider information. Speaking of chaotic dynamism, I would like to learn how to paint with acrylics on Yupo. Not acrylics, I'm sorry. Alcohol inks on, on Yupo. I have Yupo, uh, and I have alcohol inks, and I have a desire to learn, a burning desire to learn. So it's all about just making time for it. Making it a priority at some point. Ooh, that's a good purple. It's less intense than Argyle. Has a little bit of a strong smell though. Have you guys noticed that some colors of alcohol-based markers smell stronger than others? I have a blue-green in the Shin Han collection that like pretty much knocks me on my butt because it's so intense. Um, and I've heard people say they don't like the Blick markers because they smell too strongly. Uh, they must be using different colors than I am because I haven't encountered that problem with Blick. But this purple is definitely a strong one. It's a shame. I guess the sites auto list like um, intensity of alcohol odor would probably help some people in their purchase. All right, so I think. Ah! Oh shit! Shoot! Shoot! I knocked my hard drive on the ground. And it was going, and I hope it's okay. I had been transferring files. It looks like it's still plugged in. I guess the files finished transferring. Sorry, I have to double check now because it's gonna make me a little nervous. Looks okay. I'm trying to clear files off my, my external, uh, my sim cards because these videos take up a lot of space one could uh, or I could why even say one could I could almost spend forever just nitpicking even with little tiny pieces like this Having a bum finger really affects your ability to hold down a... Hold down a piece of paper. Actually affects my ability to do pretty much everything. Who knew? Okay, 
So the first two layers of her dress were applied with BG13, which is a mint green. Though it doesn't, it looks more like toothpaste mint than mint the plant. And then next is BG15 Aqua. And I'm letting the brush do a lot of the work, flicking it, kind of just pushing the color along. This is definitely one of those times where having a, a brush tip is so much nicer than having a, having a bullet nib or trying to use a chisel tip. And the last color I'm doing isn't necessarily the best choice, but it's the best choice I've currently got, BG07 Petroleum Blue which is a very, um, well, I think of it as a very strong color. It's not the sort of color you would necessarily find in nature. And I'm going to blend some parts of it into the rest using BG15 Aqua again. And I think I'm even going to use that ballet pink. Maybe not even ballet. Let's see what this looks like. This is Tuscan red. It is probably too red. It is too red. Let's try. What are you? Flagstone red. Also probably too red. Yes. Also too red. Uh, all right. I guess that leaves me with ballet pink. And that's really pushing the color because it's so white are so light, there's a lot of, um, there's less color and more blender fluid. I just wanted to do like a um, cast sort of shadow, like a reflected shadow from the rose. Let's see, where are you? Come here, brick red, huh? <sighs> Ugh, too red. How bad is Poppy? Ugh, too orange. Might be the best we're gonna get. And then I'll probably go back into that a little bit with the blue. And then last thing I'm gonna do with the markers is go back into the background and darken it up some more. Right, so that is the basic drawing, watercolor, not watercolor, Copic, sorry, illustration. I'm going to clean my Copics out of the way. I'm going to spray some more tea. So we've got the Poppy Red, um, R, no, I'm sorry, R22, uh, YG, Oh my gosh, look, where I cleaned, and I was careful too, where I cleaned, it was like a YG41, I want to say, and here's BV00, see with the ink, careful with that. Clean this out of the way as well. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of BV. And the YG is going to push think whatever we put it on forward a little bit because yellow has a tendency to do that. So only a little bit. And then the the R22. See how it's quickly being absorbed? It's because the paper has basically been primed to take it. So I'm gonna let that dry out and then I'm gonna do the design on the front of her dress. All right, so I'm going to draw in my hibiscus dress pattern and then I'm going to uh, white it out basically. And again, 
I have my reference on my computer computer screen. I'm sorry that you guys can't see it. I could share it with you, but that would be effort. And I am drawing the print really big because Kara is really little. And uh, one of my lazy ways of demonstrating her scale is with oversized prints. I also just think they look kind of cute. And I have here Copic's Opaque White and a glass of water and a synthetic brush. And no paper towel, because I'm dumb. And I want the opaque white to cover my pencil lines. Otherwise, it's gonna look pretty sloppy. And I like to use a synthetic brush for this because I don't want to wreck one of my nice natural fiber brushes with the potential of dry uh, various not various, I'm sorry, opaque white. And when opaque white is dry, it's water soluble when wet, um, but when it's dry, you can't really budge it. You can kind of stain it with Copic markers, but it'll never be the same color as uh, if you put it on paper. So I take that to mean I can't make any corrections when I, I mean, it would have to be like a glaring correction when I'm, Thinking something I'm gonna marker and same goes for watercolor you can't once you you might be able to like kind of fix it with watercolor ground I'll have to test that at some point but it'll probably never be the same color so if you can just live with the mistake it might be better just to be okay with that And uh, I really should clean my table before I did this part because it's sticky from the various ink I sprayed. And I'm trying to be careful because I'm afraid that if I have any on my hand, it's going to get printed onto the piece I'm currently working on. Nice thing about synthetics is they don't really hold a lot of water and they keep a point pretty well if you buy one that has a point to begin with. You do have to be a little bit pick, picky. So they're great for um, exactly this kind of an application. And with the opaque white, it's pretty opaque, but you can make it even more opaque by allowing it to dry and then painting another layer on top, which can help show light or just make your coverage more even. All right. So, now just the normal little highlights. And some people like to use a signal gel, signo gel pen for this. And I used to like to use a signo gel pen for this, but I can't get them to work for me anymore, even brand new ones. So, it's okay. Just go a little more old school. I think that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed my um, demonstration using Copic Wide, Copic Various Ink in spray bottles, Copic Blick Prismacolor and Shinhan Twin Touch Alcohol Base Markers, and Copic Various Ink all on Strathmore Mixed Media Paper, the highest series they've got. Have a good day guys, bye!